Hello Rail fans, and welcome to another French Fried Trains Minecraft Locomotive tutorial. Today, we're going to be building CN number 3115, the BC Rail Heritage Unit. This locomotive is an ET44 AC, and we just made our first attempt at building an ET44 AC a couple videos ago. And I was never quite happy with that one, so this build features many slight improvements over the last attempt. So let's get right into it here. As usual, I'll be putting it on the front of the train I already have. So the first step is to take out a dark oak stair to be the coupler, get it connected up. Underneath that, put a dark oak fence gate for an air hose. Then delete the fence gates on either side of the coupler on this locomotive, replace them with dark oak fence and extend them out to be connected cables and hoses. Then on the next block down, facing this way on the rails, we need three polished andesite stairs facing this way. On the outside edges, upside down stairs facing outward. Then a polished andesite block in the middle and two forward facing upside down stairs on either side of that. On the top row, put a temporary block in the corner and three smooth quartz stairs upside down forward facing in the middle. Delete your temporary block and switch back to polish andesite. Come behind here and make a T-shape, and then put an end rod down at bottom above each rail. Behind that, back to polish andesite, and we need to make a five by three coming across the rails. Then we're gonna switch to polish andesite slab for the stairs and put them, three of them in that gap coming up on the bottom hip boxes of all three blocks. Same thing on this side. Now we're going to do our wheels, so get a block of netherite, skip one block back from this, and get netherite on each rail with an end rod for an axle. Behind that we're going to take stone brick stairs, and we're going to put them in an upside down, back to back T-shaped pattern that comes five blocks across the rails. Behind that the next set of wheels, so netherite on each rail, end rod axle, and back to stone brick stairs, same thing, upside down T-shaped pattern five across the rails, back to back. Then the last set of wheels, so netherite on each rail again, with an end rod axle. Then take a dark oak fence gate and open it into the ends of the wheels here. Come around and open it into the ends of the wheels on this side here. Then we're gonna switch back to polish andesite block. And on this top here, we're gonna fill in this top middle three starting at the front and coming down to the back of this truck. We come out over those fence gates in one more row of three. Then underneath that, we put a row of three on the bottom. Then on the outside of that bottom row, we're gonna put upside down, outward facing, polished andesite stairs coming down in a row that's 15 blocks long in total. Once you have 15 blocks, swing around like this, three polish andesite across the rails. Then on this side, same thing, upside down, outward facing stairs, 15 blocks long in total to come up and connect and finish the bottom of the fuel tank off here. Then we switch back to polish andesite block, come on here and fill in this top middle three, starting up there and coming down to the other end of the fuel tank. We stop at the edge of the fuel tank for now. Now we gotta do our next wheel, so skip a block back from that and netherite on each rail with an end rod axle. Then stone brick stairs upside down in a back to back T shaped pattern coming five blocks across the rails. Then the next set of wheels, so netherite on each rail again with an end rod axle. Then back to stone brick stairs and another upside down back to back T-shaped pattern that comes five blocks across the rails. Then our final set of wheels, so netherite on each rail again with an end rod axle. Then open a dark oak fence gate into the ends of the wheels here and open them into the ends of the wheels over here as well. Then we'll swing around on top with our polished andesite block again and keep filling in the top middle three coming down. 
we come out above those fence gates and then in front of that we need to get a five by three of polish andesite blocks coming from right above the rails and then three blocks up in front of that we're gonna make this t-shaped pattern and then put an end rod on bottom above each rail in front of that polish andesite stairs three of them coming this way on bottom and then upside down outward facing stairs on the sides then a block in the middle and two upside down forward facing stairs on either side here on top three upside down forward facing smooth quartz stairs in the middle then three polished andesite slabs coming up in the gap on each side here to be the stairs then take out a dark oak stair for your coupler turn around and get it stacked up to that second block delete the one you use for placement and underneath it we're going to put a sideways dark oak fence gate to either side we're going to open a dark oak fence gate into the plow on either side of the coupler this is one of my improvements i was putting two on either side but then we weren't connecting them like they would really be connected on the train so there's no point in having the ones on the outside edge so from now on we're just going to put one fence gate on either side now come on the side of the truck here above it and run stone brick slabs from the front wheel to the back wheel same thing over here a line of slabs from the front wheel to the back wheel then we gotta do the other side so a line of slabs here and one more corner to go a line of slabs here then we're gonna take out a grindstone and on the side here in front of the wheels everywhere there's a wheel we're gonna hang an upside down grindstone same thing here so three grindstones in here then we got to do the other side so grindstone in front of these wheels and upside down grindstones in front of these three wheels now we decide which ends the front my front's gonna face the void so this is the engineer side so come on the engineer side on the front of the fuel tank and put a row of four polished andesite blocks, then two on the back, then a crimson button on the very front. Then we're gonna put a line of four anvils on the front for the air tank and four anvils coming from the back. In that middle, put another crimson button. Then we'll do the other side, which is much easier. It's just a full row of polished andesite blocks coming down the top of the fuel tank. Then on the front, on this side, we're gonna put a crimson button on front, skip a block, and another crimson button. Then we'll hang a bell right here, and then we'll switch to chains, put chains up in that corner, chain in between the fuel tank here, come around here, chains in these gaps, and then chains in this corner. I'm actually unsure on that bell placement there. I couldn't find good enough photos to show me what side the bell's on. So I'm going to put it where I normally would put it for an ET44AC, and we'll just go with it. Now we're going to take out a smooth quartz block, and on this third block up here, we're going to start filling it in from the end. Five across, and go all the way down to the other end of the locomotive. Now we're going to come on the front, two blocks in, and on the left hand side we're going to put a red concrete and a white concrete above it. Skip a block, white and red, then red and white, then white and red. In the top middle, put a sea lantern to be the headlight. On either side of that, we're going to take polished blackstone stairs and put them sideways. Behind that, three polished blackstone blocks. Then on these sides, a column of two blue concrete on either side. Then forward facing black stone stairs on top of the blue concrete. And then black carpet in the corners. Behind that, we're going to put a column of two blue concrete on either side with white concrete above it. Then we're going to take out a light gray glass block, put two of those, red concrete in the middle, and two more. Behind this on bottom, we're going to make a 2x2 two two of blue concrete. Same thing on the other side, a 2x2 two two of blue concrete. 
then two white concrete above it, then a column of three blue concrete behind that. In the sides, we'll put light gray stained glass panes for the side windows. And we can't use blue concrete for the locomotive number because it will just blend in, so I'm going to put two warp signs on either side under the window to represent where the locomotive number is. Now come above the front windows with red concrete and put three coming across the top middle. And actually I just realized behind the side windows is the wrong color. Put red on top behind those windows, not blue. Then we're going to take out smooth quartz block and we'll fill in the rest of the cab roof with smooth quartz block. On the sides here, we're going to put smooth quartz stairs right side up and outward facing on both sides. Then come on top behind the roof of the cab here with red concrete. And in the middle we're going to put two rows of three red concrete. Then three coming down the middle. On the conductor side it goes two sideways blast furnaces and a red concrete. It's asymmetrical on this side. Sideways blast furnace, red concrete, sideways blast furnace. Then another row of three red concrete behind that. Then on this side, a row of two bedrock. Put two red concrete in the middle. And on the other side, one red concrete, one bedrock. Then another row of three red concrete behind it. Come around on this side here and close a trap door over the bedrock. We don't need that one on top, that was a mistake. Then over here, between the two blast furnace, put a dark oak sign to be another vent. Come up behind the cab with blue concrete, one block to the inside, and bring a row of blue concrete down till we're lined up with where we're working at on the end of this vent section here. Same thing on this side, bring a line of blue concrete down. Then above that, another line of blue concrete. Same thing on this side, a second line of blue concrete. I just realized another mistake. This line on the cab needs to be white, not blue. Same thing, that block needs to be white, not blue. On the conductor side, we'll run a full row of white concrete down. And on this side, we're gonna skip a block to leave room for a door, and then bring white concrete to the back. Above that, we'll put red concrete, still leaving that gap for the door. And then we'll go ahead and put red concrete in a line coming down on this side as well. Now the conductor side has this big box here, so starting right behind the cab on bottom, we're going to take blue concrete and we're going to run it down from the cab in a line that's seven blocks long, so it stops above that second crimson button. Then another line of blue, and then a line of seven white. Behind it, we're going to put a two by two of blue concrete, because it actually steps down on this one. Then the engineer side is a little different. So up on the engineer side, we're going to put a stack of two blue concrete to get up to the level of the door here. Then a line of five blue concrete coming off to the left. Come up on the bottom of the cab on this side. And we're going to knock out this block here on the back of the cab, skip a block in another one, and put blue shulker boxes there. Now we're going to work on the rear end. So in the very middle, two blocks in from the end, we're going to put two blue concrete, then a white concrete, and then a red. Then on the sides, we're going to put two blue kitty corner, one block in front of it, then white on top of those, and then bedrock on top of those. This is another improvement over the last attempt. I'm building the vent section a little bit lower so it doesn't stick up so high and look abnormal. In the back middle, put one more red concrete on top. Then, we're going to place a right side up red nether brick stair facing outward on either side of that, and then a red nether brick slab coming off the sides on each side. In front of that, we're going to do the same thing. So bring your slab forward by one and your stairs forward by one. 
fill in the middle with red concrete. Then here we're going to put a row of four polished blackstone brick stairs to be the vent. Same thing on this side. Then a red nether brick on either side. And then two polished blackstone brick on either side. And then a red nether brick in front of those on either side. Go ahead and fill in this whole middle with red concrete here. Now we'll come underneath here with red nether brick stair and starting at that bedrock, put an upside down red nether brick stair and bring it forward till you get to this first single red nether brick stair. Then in front of that, three red nether brick slabs. Now we're gonna do that same pattern on the other side. So come on the bottom of this bedrock, upside down red nether brick stairs and bring it forward to this first single red nether brick stair. Then three red nether brick slabs coming forward to the front. Then come on top of those here and run a row of red nether brick slabs from the back to the front. So everything's on that same level up here. Same thing on this side. Now we're gonna come underneath this radiator section and we're gonna start knocking out the middle three blocks. And we're gonna knock out the middle three coming nine blocks forward. This is another slight improvement because the last time I built one of these, I left this bottom inside the base color and it didn't look right through the see-through vents. Then, once we've knocked all those out, we're gonna take out a block of netherite and just fill this all in with netherite here. That way when you look in through the vents, it'll look dark and appropriate. We'll go ahead and fill that end with netherite as well. On this side, starting at the back, we're gonna put a column of two blue concrete, then a column of two iron bars. Then a warp stair and a blue concrete above it, close the trap door to be the brake wheel. Then a two by two of iron bars, then two blue concrete, then two iron bars, and two blue concrete. Come around on this side behind it here, and in the middle, we're gonna put a line of anvils coming out. On the front, we're gonna put a stack of three netherite, and then a line of netherite on the second row up coming down. Then this side is gonna be slightly different. On this side it goes, two iron bars right at the back, two blue concrete. Two iron bars, two blue concrete. Two iron bars, two blue concrete. Two iron bars, two blue concrete. So you should have four vents made of iron bars there. Then come up under here, above these iron bar vents, and we're gonna take out white concrete block. And we'll start at the back and we'll run a row of white concrete to the very front of this vent section we're working on. Same thing on the other side, run some white concrete up to the front of this here. Then up in between here in the middle, get two more netherite in there and put three anvils coming across. Then we're gonna put netherite across the back where those stairs are and then three iron bars coming forward on either side. Now the complicated part's done and we can fill in this middle gap finally. So on either side, we're gonna bring a column of two blue concrete from front to back. Same thing over here, two blue concrete coming across here. Then above those, a line of white concrete coming forward. Same thing on that other side there, white concrete over there. Then on this level, we'll fill this whole top in coming three across with red concrete from the front section to the back section here. And actually now that I'm looking at it, just to make it match, I'm gonna delete this middle row of red concrete on top of the radiators here. And we'll go ahead and just use red nether brick just so that whole section matches. 
Now we'll do our exhaust section, which is also raised up. Red nether brick stair on this side, skip a block, and another stair. Three stairs on the other side. Red nether brick down the middle, and a smoker in that gap to be the exhaust. Then under here, the white stripe has an angled section that comes up, and it's not really easy to do with a one block scale. So under the end of that, we're gonna knock out one, skip a block and knock out one, and replace it with white concrete to represent the angled stripe that also has a small red stripe inside it. Now we'll fill this section in. So red nether brick stairs, three of them facing this way coming off the front dynamic brake section. Then three red nether brick slabs. Then in the middle we're going to open back to back dark oak fence gates to be the horn. And we'll fill all the rest of this top in with red nether brick slabs. Now we're going to go ahead and swing around to the rear end of the locomotive here. Because it still doesn't quite look right on the back here. And on these outsides where it's sticking off, we're going to take out red nether brick slab and put two slabs on bottom there. Same thing on this side. Now it looks a little better. Now we're going to come on top again because it still looks a little off to me. And we're going to put a row of slabs coming down the middle, starting at the front of the exhaust section and going all the way to the back. Now it's looking more correct. Then we're going to come on the roof of the cab here with an iron trap door. And in the middle, put two iron trap doors on either side. Then we'll fill in the rest of the cab roof with white carpet. Then we're going to switch to red carpet for this dynamic brake section. Start filling everything up here with red carpet. have to come down and crouch to put the carpet above these blast furnaces. Then on this side on top of this box where the white concrete is we're gonna put red carpet coming down above that and blue carpet down on that right hand side on top of the two blue. Then we'll bring blue carpet all the way down the walkway to the back of the locomotive here. We'll wrap it around and have just one sticking off in the back middle and then bring the blue carpet all the way forward on this side. And just keep it coming here. And then up on this stair and up on that stair. On the front porch, we just make this T-shaped pattern of light gray carpet. Now we'll do our railings, so take out a birch fence. Start on the bottom over here, come up three over one, up one over one and make it a two by two. Same thing on this side. Start on bottom, up three over one, up one over one and make it a two by two. On this side, it's just three coming up in a vertical pattern on both sides. Then we'll do the back the same way. I accidentally deleted that carpet. So start on bottom, come up three over one, up one over one, make it a two by two. Up three over one, up one over one, make it a two by two. Then on this side, we need to make a column of four coming up on either side. The rest of the railings are blue. We don't have blue, so I'll use warp. So switch to a warp fence and start bringing this railing forward all down this walkway here. When we get by this box, we're gonna come up another two, and then over two, and then up one, and then over to connect up with the back of the cap here. Then we'll do this side, still using warped fence. Connect it up on back here and start bringing the warped fence forward. Just keep it coming here. Once we get by this stair, we come up one, and then start coming over again, and then this stair, up another one, and over to connect with the cab. Now we'll put in our doors, and you can use whatever door looks best to you, because none of them really match. I'm going to put a crimson door on the front 
and a birch door on the back here. Then we're gonna take out a birch sign here because there's no real other way to represent where it says BC Rail at a one block scale. So I'm just gonna put three birch signs there to represent the logo. Same thing here. So start where those stairs are and come forward with three birch signs to represent the logo. Now take black carpet and make this T-shaped pattern on top of the nose. Then put an item frame over that sea lantern with another sea lantern in it for the headlight. Two item frames down here with sea lanterns to be the ditch lights. On the top front above the window, take a dark oak sign for our locomotive number 3115. Same thing on the other side. Then we'll come down and work on the back end. So come around on back here in this red concrete item frame with sea lantern for a rear headlight. Then item frames down on these fences with sea lanterns for ditch lights. Then we're going to use a warp sign because the numbers are blue back here. And I put them on the wrong. We want them on the bottom of that. Just like that there. So go ahead and put the warp sign there with 3115. Same thing on the other side. 3115. Now we'll do the interior. So come on in through this nose door here. And in this corner, we'll put an end portal for a toilet. Then we're going to take smooth sandstone slabs and stack it up in front of that all the way to the bottom of the window. Same thing on this side. Then we're going to turn to the side here and use our slabs to stack up to the same level as the door. Same thing on this side. And then also in back here in front of the door. Then we'll use our slabs here to make a staircase to get down. And I'll test it out real quick and make sure we can fit through it. And we do. We'll put a door right there as well. Then we'll come back up here. Put a blast furnace on bottom in the back and a sea lantern for light. Then we'll spin around to the front, put an item frame in the middle with an end crystal to be the computer screen. Then a lever on the right for the engineer and a slab on the top on the left for the conductor desk. Spin around like this and put in two stairs to be seats. Now the interior of the locomotive is completed. And we're almost done here. Now we need to make a banner, so come into a loom with a white banner and black dye. Put a vertical on the right and a vertical on the left. Switch to red dye, make the top half red. Then switch to white dye and put a white border around it. Then we can go put this on the locomotive and it goes right here on the side of the nose. Same thing over here. There's like a Canadian National Heritage sticker up there. And I didn't know how else to make it other than to use a banner. And I thought of a different way to do these diagonal stripes under the exhaust. So we're going to knock out these three blocks. We're going to take a red concrete on the front, a right side up smooth quartz stair, and then behind it an upside down smooth quartz stair. I don't usually use that building technique because I don't like the gaps it creates but I think in this case it's warranted. So same thing over here, delete these three. Red concrete in the front, right side up stair here, and an upside down stair there. So it looks a little better. You can use either method, depending on if you want those gaps. And there we have it, folks. We've completed this Canadian National ET 44 AC BC Rail Heritage Unit. I like this ET44 AC build better than the last one with the improvements that we've made and I hope you like it too. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and everyone have a great week. Stay safe out there.